All right, we've mounted our six jaw chuck on the lathe. Remember, the six jaw is one of my favorite chucks because of its versatility. If we're clamping a piece of tubing, we're not going to crush it. We have the ability to dial in each of the independent jaws in order to uh, get better concentricity out of the part that we want to turn. We're going to take our initial bushing, insert it into the chuck, We want to leave a little bit sticking out of the front of the chuck for our facing operation when we get ready to face this part. We don't want to mount it too far out of the chuck because if we take too heavy of a cut, we can twist and torque and throw this part out. It also has a tendency to mar the material if we squeeze really hard with just the end or tips of our chuck grabbing. So always seat the material back as far as you can, leaving a proportionate amount out that you're going to be working with. If we have a highly finished part and we need to protect the surface finish on this where we don't want any clamp or jaw marks, simply take a piece of paper or a piece of brass shim stock and we can wrap that around our part, slide it into place in our chuck, tighten it down and now we've protected the finish of that part by insulating it with a piece of paper or a piece of brass shim stock. It's a neat little trick to keep in mind. Let's take a minute and show you another example of dealing with a little bit smaller part in the six jaw chuck. This particular six jaw chuck is made by Buck, very high quality chuck and each of those jaws is adjustable so like the four jaw we can dial in a part if necessary. We've clamped our part in the chuck, let's turn it on and see how far it's running out at this stage of the game. We can see a little bit of run out in the part. Now let's dial in that machined surface that we machined earlier on our test part. Back our cross feed out and we'll take our dial indicator and set it on our machined surface. Preload the dial indicator. You always want to do that for the amount of run out that we're dealing with. We'll rotate the chuck. All right, we can see we've got about four thousandths of total indicated run out on our chuck. Now let's adjust that out. <coughs> You'll see the smaller hex screws located in the chuck scroll itself, and we're going to loosen and tighten those respectively in order to dial in this part if we were to machine it. It's important to place our dial indicator in either the 12 o'clock or 9 o'clock position on the work part that we're doing. So as we rotate the chuck and we watch our dial indicator, we can make the necessary adjustments that will affect the location of that part in the chuck. All right, so as we rotate our chuck, we're looking for the high spot on the chuck, and now it seems to be number four. So we align number four up at 12 o'clock on our chuck, we're going to break that loose. You can see now that we've taken about a thou and a half out of our run out. Okay, number one is showing a low spot, so we're going to tweak that in just a little bit. Okay, and number one again is just a couple of tenths low. Number four. Okay, now when you're dialing in a part two, you need to keep in mind the surface finish. If we've got a very coarse finish on the part, it's going to be very difficult for you to dial the part in any finer than the particular finish that you have on the part. So we want to have good sharp tools or a good ground finish when we're dealing with a surface to dial in. Okay, now we've dialed that part in within about two ten thousandths of an inch. Now if we were to turn our machine on and very gently bring it up to speed, we can watch that we've got about two ten thousandths run out on the part, which again, close enough for most machine work that you're likely to encounter. So you can see once again the versatility of the six jaw. You can't dial it in or adjust the jaws as much as you can the four. You're only dealing with a run out of approximately 15 to 20 thousandths that you're able to pull that part 
back into concentricity with your lathe spindle. Okay, if you're dealing with parts that you've got to dial in more than that, by all means use the four jaw.